Buenos días a todos. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming to the presentation of the report of the OCDE, and, uh, which is called the ABC of Gender Equality and Education. We have the Deputy Secretary General of the OECD here with us, Mr. Stefan Kapferer, and uh, he is in charge of skills in education and many other matters, and he's going to compare the results with various different countries, and then I will have my presentation, which will concentrate more on the results for Spain. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Secretary of State. Uh, it's uh, really a great pleasure to be here with you today. I had another event in the morning, uh, with uh, the Spanish Agency of uh, Development Cooperation about gender issues in uh, the MENA region. And I said, today is the hotspot of the, Madrid is the hotspot today of the OECD work on gender. And I think uh, it is uh, really relevant to discuss this issue because uh, it is very clear that this is not only a political target of governments in OECD countries that we have equal access and equal rights for both sexes in our uh, societies. It is also, and that's very uh, clear, a moral imperative, and I think everybody will agree, but it is also very important when we talk about the economic performances, not only the economic performances of young people. It is very clear if uh, the results of the education process are better the perspectives later on in the life are better, but it's uh, also a question of uh, the impact on the economic and the potential growth in uh, aging societies, and most OECD member countries, you know, that are aging societies. That means it is our interest to use the whole talent pool we have in our societies, and when there are differences in the a gender situation when you look at the outcome of the education process, we have to think about what to do to improve the situation. Um, the first slide I want to show you is um, a very easy one because this slide shows um, that we were very successful in the OECD countries by increasing the share of uh, people going to a higher level of education. Uh, you can see it on the, the left-wing side of the slide, but what you can see on the right side, and this is, I think, the most important issue for today, is that not only the number of uh, young people going to the university and finalizing studies at the universities is increasing over the last decades, it is uh, much more relevant that uh, something has inverted the situation is now that much more female students are finalizing studies at the universities. The situation, you can see it on this slide, 30 years ago was totally uh, different and this has changed. And it's interesting to look why this has changed. Why are uh, women often performing much better than boys in our education system? And, uh, one reason for that is that, um, first of all, uh, you can see it here, more women are going to the university because most young women are performing much better and uh, it's the same situation in mostly all OECD member countries, in all countries, it was 65 countries who were part of the last PISA studies, and in all these countries, you can see it on these slides, the girls are performing better when you talk about literacy skills, about reading, uh, but also um, often when you talk about mathematics and science. And um, when you ask for the reasons for this, it is very interesting to look at uh, some explanations. One explanation is uh, when you ask these young students, and you know, in the PISA studies, we ask 15 years old boys and girls. When you ask these young students, what are they doing when they are not at school? How often do they play computer games? How often do they play video games? How often 
do they surf in the internet, there are a lot of differences between girls and boys. Um, it is uh, very obvious that uh, much more often boys are using the computer and the video games nearly every day or very often per week. Uh, girls do it uh, less and this is uh, one reason we we'll believe that this has an impact to the outcome of the studies at school for these young people. Second aspect we have to look is when we find the results that uh, the reading skills of 15-year-old uh, girls are in most countries much better than the reading skills of 15-year-old boys, we ask these school pupils, these students, what are you reading for? And it's interesting to see, for example, boys are much more focused on reading comics and newspapers. Newspapers doesn't mean that they read a newspaper every day, but they said, okay, when I read, I read comics and newspapers. When you look at the figures for girls, girls are much more often reading fiction, much more often reading real books, and uh, they are much more often reading um, uh, journals as boys. That means there's a lot of difference, and it is a very clear impact that the reading skills, the literary skills of girls are better because they are reading much more than boys do. And another important uh, question is uh, to look at the attitudes students have going to school. The good news is most of the students have positive attitudes going to schools because when you look at these figures and this is only the figure about the people, the young people who are not so happy going to school and you see it's uh, the highest the highest figure is uh, a little bit more than 15 percent that means on the other side that uh, nearby 85 percent of uh, young students have positive attitudes going to school that's good news but uh, when you look at the group who has negative attitudes going to school it is uh, obviously the case that uh, the figure of the girls is doubled by the boys. Much more boys have negative attitudes going to school. Also positive uh, news, dear colleague, is that uh, in Spain the figures are lower, that's good news. But I think 15% of uh, boys not happy going to school or with negative attitudes, thinking that's waste of time going to school, that's a group of uh, young students, we have to think about what can we do to improve the situation. Another very interesting result of our study is um, what about the marks given to boys and girls by teachers? And the interesting result is that um, when you look at um, students with similar competencies of boys and girls for reading, for example, much more often the marks given by teachers to these students are better for the girls because, and one reason we are sure, is that uh, teachers know the results that often the reading competencies of girls are better and then you can see it also in the marks they give to this group of young students. And uh, now a few slides about self-confidence. Because it's very clear when you are going to school in the age of 15 and uh, the process of becoming an adult is still going on, self-confidence and what do you think about your abilities is a, a very important aspect. And it's interesting to see that, uh, for example, boys are more confident in their abilities in science than girls. Boys answer, for example, that uh, school science topics are easier for me as girls do. That means the self-confidence, the feeling of boys, yes, science is something I'm able to work on, is uh, much higher compared to girls with the same 
abilities. And it is uh, a very similar situation when we talk about mathematics, because girls often have less confidence in their situation working on mathematics. When you look at the first figure, much more girls, nearly 50% say, I'm just not good at mathematics, and less than 40% of boys say the same. I think that's a very interesting result of our research that uh, in science and mathematics, the self-confidence of girls is much lower than that of the boys. And uh, girls are also much more often anxious when they are asked about their work in school on mathematics because they much more often say, I worry that it will be, di be difficult for me in mathematics classics and they becoming nervous also much more often than boys do. The figures are for both sex is relatively high when you look at this uh, slide, more than 50% of the boys, but nearly 70% of the girls say, I often worry that it will be difficult for me in mathematics. I think that's a, a very high, high figure and we have to think about what to do. When we talk about career perspectives for uh, young students, it's also very important to ask for the situation, how do they think about their career perspectives? How do they inform themselves? And it's uh, very interesting to see that girls are often looking in the internet, the girls are informing by completing uh, questionnaires about uh, careers in the business. Boys are much more often going to internships are much more often hands-on experienced as girls and this is I think also a very important aspect for later decisions about which one is the right career for me. And um, it is uh, not really surprising but um, I think the figures are really impressing when you ask young students can you imagine to start a career in engineering or computing. And when you look at this slide, and it's not necessary to read the name of all the countries because the result is very similar in, in all these countries, the number of young male students who say, yes, I'm, I can imagine to start a career in engineering or in uh, computing is much higher than the number of uh, female students in the same age. And we all know, and I think that's a very important aspect, we all know that jobs in science, techniques, engineering, mathematics are the backbone of our future economy. And when you look at these figures, it's not only a gap between boys and girls. It's also interesting that only in two countries, more than 30% of the boys say, I can imagine to start a career in engineering or computing. And uh, when you look at the countries with the lowest figures, and the figure uh, over the name of the country is the average between boys and girls, then you can see that uh, the percentage is in many, many countries lower than 10% of the young, student, young students of uh, 15 years old thinking about a career uh, starting in engineering or computing. And it's totally the opposite when you look at uh, career perspectives in the health service. In all countries, it is inverted. In all countries, the number of uh, female young students is answering, yes, I can imagine, uh, starting a career in the health service much higher than the figure of uh, young male students and uh, the figure is totally higher also in the average but it's I think a very clear proof that the expectations are different and one reason for that and I think that's also very interesting is the expectation 
parents have to the potential career of their children. We compared figures for similar group of young students with similar abilities, male and female. And we asked the parents, what do you think about a career in uh, science, technologies, engineering, or mathematics? And it is very interesting that in all countries where we had this questionnaire, the number of parents who said, yes, I can imagine that my son is starting a career in this business, is much higher as the number of parents who said the same for the girls. And this always in a situation where the abilities of the children of these parents were similar. That means parents are influencing by their expectations the decision of young students, what is the right career step for me. Only two more slides to finish. I think the main question is uh, what would happen if we were able to reduce the gender gap? And it is uh, very clear if we were able to increase the confidence of female students of 15 years old that their ability in mathematics are similar to the abilities of male students of 15 years, we could narrow the gender gap in all the countries a lot, and you can see there are some countries, good performing countries, where the situation would be different afterwards. At the moment, for example, in Finland, we have a situation that boys are performing better, uh, and if we were able to convince young female Finnish students that their abilities in mathematics are similar to the abilities of the boys, at the end we would have an inverted gap with an uh, advantage for the girls in Finland. And uh, last slide, a little bit difficult, but um, not to look at it too long, but only to, to, to have a short look in the middle of this slide, is the message that there are some countries where the gender gap is relatively low in education. And there's another interesting message. In these countries, Shanghai, China, Hong Kong, China, are the best performers often in our studies, Shanghai, China, and Hong Kong, China, the results for boys, in, for girls in mathematics, are better than the results of boys in mathematics in lower performing countries. That means it's not an, gender, an innate gender difference between these countries. It is a situation different based on the education system and the success of the education system. Only a, a few remarks to finalize because to have these data, this evidence-based data is one thing, to ask for recommendation is another thing. And the good news is, it is possible to close the gender gap. And another good news is, it is not so expensive. Because when you remember all the arguments, what are the reasons for the gender gap, it is very clear that this is not a question of spending a lot of money for the education system. It is a, a very traditional answer. It's a, a responsibility of the parents. Think about your gender bias as parents. What do you recommend your children if you have a daughter about a professional career? Is it always the right thing to think about education or healthcare? Or maybe is engineering or mathematics not also interesting for girls? Thinking about this is very relevant for parents. And also the question, how many hours in the week are children unplugged? Everybody with children know this discussion. I have an 11-old year son, and you can imagine that's a discussion I have at home also. How many hours can he play video games, and how many hours has he to do something different? How many hours is he unplugged? And with 11, he's often unplugged, but you know it's increasing. And when there is a close link between the, the hours you use to play video games and the results, and the performance of your 
educational career, it's very clear this is for parents a task, a responsibility to think about it. But it's also a responsibility of teachers. You have seen that uh, teachers are also gender bias influenced. The teachers believe, yes, girls are well performing in reading, but maybe worse performing in mathematics. And also teachers have the possibility to think about and to look for alternatives when they give marks to their uh, students. And I think it's also a responsibility of employers. All the employers are interested in aging societies to get new employees. And I know at the moment the youth unemployment rate is relatively high in Spain, but this will change, that's very clear, in the future. And then it is also a responsibility of employers to think about how can I convince young female students that maybe jobs in engineering and computing are also interesting. That means there is a lot to do to close the gender gap. We can be successful. It is not a question of money. It's a question of our behavior, a question of the behavior of the students, a question of the behavior of the parents and the teachers, and also a question of the behavior of the employers in our countries. Thank you for your attention, and now we are interested to hear a little bit more about the situation in Spain.